Will 2010 sponsors succeed like Vienna or fail like Beijing? In studio to discuss this, I have our resident 2010 analyst, Dr. Nick. Dr. Nick, welcome back to the show. Quite an interesting topic if we, if, that we're going to be looking at here. Adidas versus Nike and the whole sponsorship sort of wrangle that's going on at the moment. Now, we're living in a recession, but the difference is Adidas has maintained that they'll keep spending on marketing. Quite an interesting aspect. Well, Adidas are holding the lion's share of the global fo football product mm. with 34% ahead of Nike. And they're spending 13% of the income on marketing activities, which they came out to say that they're going to re re keep the marketing spend stable during 2010. Yeah. Well, Adidas, they also came out to say that they see marketing as an investment, an overall investment. And they're setting their sights on digital campaigns for 2010. They're looking to recoup their goal. Their goal for their sales is $1.3 billion for 2010. Quite a huge amount. It's a huge amount. But again, if you look back at previous tournaments, 2006 World Cup in Germany and the 2008 Euro, it is very achievable um, because, remember, not only are they equipping the hosting team, mm. they're also sponsoring the, the, the uh, national strip uh, and the ball. Mm. And in fact, in Germany, they managed, it's the last World Cup, they managed to increase their turnover on certain products by as much as 40%. Yeah. But now, how is Adidas getting it right compared to Nike and Puma, for example? What are they doing right in terms of their marketing strategies that is allowing them to set goals of $1.3 billion? Well, actually, if you look at which sponsors won were the biggest winner at the 2006 World Cup and which ones were the biggest losers, it becomes very clear that if you, as a sponsor, if all you do is you just rely on your sponsorship and you fly a couple of ads and you do a little bit of print media, then you will not achieve mm. the brand awareness you want. 